because there's not enough seats here. And you should be able to hear me like pretty clear if you're standing outside. So first, uh, sorry for the delay with the pizza. Um, Vishnu has already shamed them enough, so I'm not going to do that again. Um, so, so the goal of today's Friday X is to share a bit more about uh, internships. So I myself have has been uh, on a couple of internships. So I started interning even before university, actually. Um, 2012, I went to CSIT. Some of you might know CSIT. I did like a small research stint there for like four months. And then after that, for my year three, I went to NOC to New York. And then I was uh, interning at a startup called Equities and they deal with some finance stuff. And then uh, immediately following NOC, I went on a, a one year leave from school. And I uh, interned at a couple of companies that you might have heard about. So I started with uh, Google in New York City. And after that, I went to Stripe, uh, Stripe in San Francisco. Uh, hands up if you don't know what Stripe is. All right, cool. Stripe is um, Stripe is uh, something like PayPal, just a lot better. Okay, Stripe is um, basically they handle payments online. Um, for very developer focused. So if you are building a website, uh, if you are building a website and you need to collect like credit card, you need to charge people money. Stripe is one option. PayPal is another option. Um, and then after Stripe, I did a, a, another internship at Uber in uh, San Francisco as well. So that's why I spent my one year doing a, a pretty productive, very fun. Um, and when I was there, I stayed with uh, Vishnu and Jingwen. So those were my roommates. Uh, we had a lot of fun together in my bedroom. And um, uh, they will remember for sure. Uh, and so Jing, Jing, we, Vishnu and I are back, but Jingwen is currently in New York uh, doing an internship with uh, Google. So uh, we kind of just sat down together. Uh, and there's also this other guy called Stacy who was at Apple. He was our pimp. He would come to our like house every weekend and we would like, hang out together. So this is... Uh, sort of like an uh, aggregation of all our thoughts and uh, what we kind of learn from the internship experience is meant to be a uh, pretty general, uh, give you a little bit of look into how an overseas internship experience would be like for you if you decide to, to do something like, like this. Okay. Um, so, so, uh, the first thing that we felt right during the initial stages of the internship was that we felt like we were not productive at all. Like the first, uh, different companies have it different ways. So for example, at Google there was a three-day orientation program. For Stripe it was like a one-day thing. For Uber it was a zero, it was a one and a half day thing. So each company has their own various orientation program. It could be engineering related, it could be some HR related. Um, and for the first few weeks, I think we all agreed that we felt very not productive because a lot of time was just spent, you know, setting up your dev environment and getting used to like the stack that the different companies use. So three different companies, all three use different languages. I, uh, I learned two new languages in three internships and I use at least six different programming languages. So it's, it's, it's really okay to be not productive because, you know, it takes a bit of time to ramp up. The initial learning curve is meant to be steep. Those are all like huge companies, right? Those are all known for like engineering. So if you join companies, uh, big companies overseas, you are not gonna, if you're productive in the first few weeks, they should immediately hire you, like right there. It's okay not to be productive. It's like, same for school, I think your first couple of days in school, right, you'll be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but after that, it, it really gets a lot better. Uh, who knows what imposter syndrome is? Yeah, who has imposter syndrome? I know, I know I do. So imposter syndrome is basically, you know, you, you do, you're doing well, but you feel like the people around you are doing a lot better and you feel like you're an imposter. So for example, you attend uh, ONS, right? Who's in ONS? Nobody? ONS. Okay, so, so this elite, elitist class in computer science, right? And you, if you attend it a lot, it, exactly, that's what I mean, right? See, it, it is. Um, so when you join like a, a, a new company, chances are you're gonna be matched with mentors who have been uh, around for a couple of years. Your colleagues who have been there for like much longer than you for sure. And they're gonna be so experienced with uh, the stack, you know, how things work, how to like look for a certain method or look for a certain functionality. And you will feel like, oh my God, shit, these guys are really smart, you know? And here I am trying to balance my you know, parentheses, trying to find where the missing semicolon is, why my shit cannot compile. So you're gonna, you're gonna feel like, hey, shit, I'm, I'm not doing well. But really, you shouldn't, because the first time I said, you're gonna be slow in the first few weeks. So the first few weeks, you're gonna be lagging behind a, a little bit, okay? And also, trust that the interview process is good. If you manage to get into a, a, a good company, you have gone through their interview process. And at Google, right, I just found that they receive uh, 3 million 
interview uh, 3 million internship applications a year and they get about I don't know thousands of interns every year so trust in their system you know if you are among the 0.01% that is that manages to get an internship you are actually pretty good right okay be confident in yourself Um, this point might be a bit controversial for you all, okay? Uh, your GPA is more or less like boosting your own confidence only, okay? This is a bit subjective, right? If you are going into certain industries, for example, government, right? Your GPA actually matters a lot. It affects your livelihood. You get paid more if you are first class as compared to like any other class, right? But as far as our experience have been at all those companies, they have never asked for the GPA, you know? It's not a topic that over lunch your colleague will be like, hey, What's your GPA? 3.9. What? Come on. You 3.9 can get to Google. No such thing happens, right? They, they look at your technical skill. They look at how you interact as a person. They look at your work ethics. They look at like your product, the product of your, your internship, right? So GPA, great. Like spend a lot of time on it, but also remember that it's not everything, okay? Um, this is a very common experience for all of us. It is very intimidating to be around people who are all like really, really smart, all have been around for a long time. But most people are really very friendly. Um, I felt this way especially at Stripe. Stripe, I think, is pretty well known for their very uh, approachable culture. Everyone there is happy to talk to you all the time. So we, they use Slack internally and you can literally ping anyone on the, uh, in the company and ask about a certain question. So for me, I had a project that had to do with uh, search indexing. Okay, so like if you use Stripe, you want to search certain records, you need to index it to make the search faster. So there was a problem setting up the dev environment, and I'm like, shit, I don't know who to ask. My mentor has never worked on search. I'm like completely alone. I felt completely alone for a while, and then I just like, you know, git blame the repo, and then I saw this name, and I'm like, oh, this person, I wonder if she's still working at Stripe. So I went to Slack, and I type in her username, and yeah, she's still working at Stripe. So I ping her, and I'm like, yo, dev environment doesn't work. She's like, oh no, it never used to work. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna fix it. And she's like, yeah, good job. So, you know, like people are more willing to drink coffee with you than you think. Um, Sing Wen has a very interesting experience with uh, Linus Lee. Linus Lee is uh, head of data science at Twitter. So I think one day he just pinged like, I guess pinged him on Twitter, should be right. Um, and like, hey, yo, you wanna, bro, you wanna get coffee? I'm Singaporean. It's like, yo, Singaporean, yeah, let's get coffee. I imagine the combo happened like that. But yeah, reach out to people that are usually very friendly and uh, approachable. This is uh, surprising probably. I think a lot of you are taking courses that you know probably don't matter. You know, you're taking like how many freshies here? Right? Are y'all taking one, two, three, one? Yes, right, most right. You think like, come on, there's no way I'm gonna prove like one plus one just a two when I'm interning at like freaking Uber, right? Actually, these kind of things are actually very useful. Okay, maybe one, two, three, one is a bit like far. But high level modules such as statistics, okay? I was working on um, I was working on experimentation at Uber. So there was this project where I needed to figure out if removing the credit card information field on the sign up page would actually lead to more users signing up and paying for their first ride. So like this, if you have taken stats, you kind of model this as like a, a stats problem, right? You have some like random variable and then you have some Obviously, I don't know my stats very well, but like you, you basically have to be statistically confident that the experiment is successful. So you have like your null hypothesis, and then you do like some chi-square test or whatever thing, you know. I just left my data scientist to, to do it, uh, to calculate for me. He just tells me like, you know, is it working? Should I ship it? But if you understand all this, right, it's actually very relevant and you will like use this as, uh, use what you learn in school at work. Um, Ting also mentioned that he has uh, used a lot of like, programming language related stuff because uh, he was working on um, I think at Twitter he was working on like Node.js garbage collection uh, many of you all, if you are especially like year one two might not know what the hell this is but like you actually study about this if you learn uh, compilers implementation okay so it's actually um, the moral story is pay attention to classes okay um, this if, if uh, so I can say more about this for, for, for Google, right? Um, Google is very well known for publishing a lot of papers. So for example, how many of you all have heard about Hadoop? Hadoop, okay. Hadoop is a, a data processing kind of thingy, uh, software, okay? Hadoop actually is an open source version of a internal Google software called MapReduce. 
So Google basically invented it, they published a paper on it, and then people got together and like, hey, this is really useful, let me implement it and open source it. Okay, so a lot of things, if you go to Google research, uh, research.google.com, you can see a lot of papers, they publish a ton of stuff talking about, the most recent one is TensorFlow, right? TensorFlow, anyone heard of it? If you're into ML, machine learning, it's basically a framework for helping machine learn about things, and then you can like, use it to make intelligent guesses about whatever you want. So companies like Google, they publish a lot of academia, and if you are like, just because you join software, uh, a engineering company as a software engineer doesn't mean that you are stuck as a software engineer. It's very possible for you to you know, extend into the academia road if uh, that's what you're interested in. Uh, this, this is especially relevant right, right, right now and also later we, you, you know why, because um, you want to speak to people that have interned somewhere, especially at places that you're interested in. So like this guy is very at Google show, so I assume he's interested in Google. He might have interned there, but if, if you have not, then maybe you should ask him, hey, yo, have you interned at Google? And then like, can you share a bit about like, what's it like interning at Google? Because different companies have a uh, different culture, different kind of technical requirements. So speak to them, you know, get your technical knowledge, go for the, go for the breath, you know. Like talk to more people from different companies and get a feel of like how the scene is like and uh, if it matches if it matches your interest so you can focus your you can direct your attention towards those companies that match your interest when you are actually applying for interviews or uh, applying for internships, sorry. Uh, this is very tricky to do, right? On one hand you wanna be like an expert. On the other hand, you kind of want to know what everything is talking about, especially in our view where things move like really, really quickly. If you do front-end development, you know like, you know, the saying is that there's a new front-end framework that comes out every day, and it's pretty true, right? NPM expands like exponentially. So you, I think the, the, the common advice we have is you want to have a lot of breath. You want to like have a lot of context around this view. You want to not know what something is, especially if like something is related to what you're interested in. If you say you're interested in front end and you have never heard of like React, Angular, then you probably need to do a bit more reading on Hacker News or something. Um, but you don't want to be like an, a jack of all trades, right? You want to focus on something. So for me, my interest is in uh, compilers. So I try and take more modest related compilers. I, in my free time, I like to read like blogs of uh, famous compilers people. You know, I like to read V8 blog uh, where they release news and they talk about like garbage collection. Um, read like blogs that the Go, you know, the programming language Go, the authors will write about, talking about the new version, and what's new in the Go garbage collector, what's new in 1.7, things like that. So you you wanna have a lot of breath, you know? Even though I like, I like backend stuff, I still keep myself updated to front end stuff, so when people say like, oh, Angular, my ears perk out a bit, and like, all I can say is like, oh, Angular, it's great, man, and then like, I'll be done. But at least I know what Angular is, right? And if I wanna look into it more, I wanna research more, I know what to Google for. Uh, so that's the advice, I explore a lot of things, because this field is really interesting, there's so many things to learn, but pick a few of your interests to really specialize and learn as much as you can uh, about it. Uh, this is a very common theme uh, throughout all my, all my internships. Technically, as an intern, it's not gonna be very difficult, right? If you, say if you, if you, if you go to Uber, and you're an intern in Uber, they're not gonna give you the task to like, oh, re-implement the core pool algorithm. That's like their bread and butter. They will never put an intern on this. You get a much more scaled down, a much more manageable task, okay? So what you want to think about and focus on is more like communication. Communication in terms of like clarifying what your internship uh, responsibilities are. Clarifying your internship like scope, you know? Um, and also like most, uh, most internships have a presentation component at the end where you would present what you did during your internship to your team or to a, a broader audience. So I did that at Google, I presented to like 20 other Googlers and then, uh, it was really, really enlightening for them because they have never, most of them have never seen or touched or used this tool that I was building and it was very interesting for them to learn that, oh shit, our software actually needs this tool and this guy like added some features to it. Um, so yeah, communication, definitely very important. So take uh, 2101 seriously. <laughs> That's, oh yeah. Uh, this is very, this is very personal for me. Um, fight to work on what you're interested in, right? So like I said, I was, uh, I'm interested in back-end systems, right? I'm interested, I'm not that keen on front-end stuff. Those are like difficult, but I'm not interested. So at Uber, my first task was the experimentation thing that I, I told you about. And um, my team actually had ideas in mind for what I would do next. So they wanted me to do more experimentation related tasks. For example, they wanted me to like A-B test certain things on the website. Um, but 
I really wasn't that interested in those things, right? I'm not that keen on data science. I'm not that keen on front end stuff. I want to like back end. I want to do things that like users will not see. You know, if I do my job well, there will be no difference except that maybe my app will run faster. So I do those kind of things. So during one of the one on one, the weekly one on ones I have with my mentor, I'm like, hey, I want to like work on this thing that you told me about that you and your colleague was gonna work on, and that was sort of have to do with uh microservices, migrating certain things to microservices. And I'm like. Oh shit, that, that sounds cool. Like, that's what everyone's talking about. I've never done it. So I want to do it. I don't care if it's like not going to be completed. He actually warned me that say that um, my internship was from, was over the summer, right? So it was from May to August. And he was like, yo, this thing is going to take forever. It's not going to be done until like maybe October or November or even next year. So you cannot see the completion of your internship task. And I'm like, I don't care. I just want to do my first service. Then he's like, okay, go. All right. So if I have never asked, I would be like A/B testing copy, and I don't think it's interesting to me, and I wouldn't have. Oh, I've learned something, but I would not. I would not have enjoyed the experience that much. So um, the the takeaway here is take charge of your learning. Your internship is be, be selfish about things, right? It's your internship. Right? Think of it as you're doing the company a favor. You know, you're like you know, set, I I'm I'm talented. Right? Think of yourself as I'm talented. I'm good, and I'm helping this company to build certain things. Right, I'm helping your company. Why am I not helping this many other companies that I can help? Right, you should be able to give me something. And what I want from you is not just money. Right, my learning. I want to be a better software engineer. I want to be a better computer science. So, what can you give me that will help me improve, be the best that uh, I can? Right, but to expand my potential. So, uh, this I really feel very strongly about this. Take charge of the learning. Okay. And is a pizza here? Yeah. And exactly, just now as I planned this to happen. Okay, so that's kind of like the few points that we can think about. Uh, pizza is here, so I will release all of you all to go and eat. But be back here in like as fast as you can, cause you have a very. You want to say something? Seven twenty. Around seven twenty. Yeah. What time is it now? Seven ten. Now it's seven ten. Uh, ten minutes, we should be able to finish the pizza. There's like some leftover food there also. If you want to help yourself. <laughs> And then try to get back here because we have more talks coming. Thanks.